Alabama before we open the floor for questions. Well, thanks very much. Uh, first off, let me uh, <clears throat> semi-apologize for my appearance. We, we just got off the practice field uh, getting ready. We had our Tuesday practice today. Uh, let me just lead off by saying, uh, you know, we're honored to be included in the college football playoff. Um, I think our guys have worked very, very hard for an opportunity like this. Uh, they've beaten down a lot of doors. Uh, they've overcome a lot of obstacles to give themselves this opportunity. Uh, we're excited that it's against the University of Alabama uh, just because of what that program and their head coach represents and Coach Saban and obviously the University of Alabama ha has been at the top of the college football world for quite some time. And it's a goal that we've had in our program to play for championships. This is an opportunity to kind of continue that goal. Uh, we were able to secure our conference championship, obviously, uh, to give ourselves this opportunity. Uh, but we look forward to, uh, you know, the opportunity to play against the best. And the champs are uh, the University of Alabama, and we get an opportunity to, to see what the Bearcats can, can do. Um, so it's an exciting time for our program. I know it's an exciting time for our players, our coaches, everybody associated with our organization. And, and what we look forward to the most is uh, giving the leadership on our football team that has brought us so far as a program uh, the opportunity on this stage to, uh, to showcase what they're capable of doing. Thank you, Mike. Now we will go to questions from the media. Remember to please activate the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. And our first question will come from Justin Williams with The Athletic. Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm doing good. How, how did you uh, sneak in front of the line? I, I talk to you every week. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm the only one here talking. Uh, you, guys, you guys have remade that wide receiver room over, you know, in recent seasons, whether it's and, – and I guess there's a surprisingly lack of – diva status among those guys, at least from the outside. Um, how do you recruit to that, whether it's homegrown guys like Alec and, and Tyler and Trey or, you know, somebody like Mike that you pull in off the portal? Well, I mean, it, it, as you know, uh, and everybody should know, it, it, it's been a real emphasis of ours to, to try to attract uh, as many playmakers uh, to get this offense a little bit more explosive uh, over the last couple of years. We've been very fortunate to do that. Uh, as you mentioned, Justin, some as homegrown talent and some uh, through other relationships or prior relationships that we've had. Um, I think the, it, there's a, maybe a misconception that there's no divas in that room. There, there's not a guy in that room that doesn't want the ball every time that we, uh, we call a pass play. Uh, but I think the best thing that we've got going for us uh, throughout the entire offense is an understanding that it's going to take all of us to be successful. Uh, your opportunities will come, provided uh, you're where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing, when you're supposed to be doing it. And uh, those guys, uh, you know, do a great job of doing that. There's a lot of really quality football players in that room, um, and and we love the opportunity to, uh, you know, not only be deep and and have more than one guy available to us to make plays, uh, but give those guys the opportunities to impact the game uh, as we go. Okay, our next question is from Justino Bovenzi. That was the, the best pronunciation of my name I've ever heard, so thank you for that. Um, uh, I go by Tino. I'm with Spectrum News 1, Coach. Um, I just want to ask how preparation has been this week. Um, obviously, uh, COVID and um, reducing the, the chances for spread has been such a big focus, and things are kind of going crazy with that. How have you been uh, – how have you guys been able to keep the guys focused and uh, you know staying safe in that regard? Well, Tino, as you know, it, it for the last year in in, uh, in more than a year, it's it's been an incredible challenge to uh, keep their minds focused on the task at hand, and it's something that we talk to them a lot about all the time. Um, it's something the leadership, the players on the team themselves, uh, have put a priority on uh, to make sure that. Uh, we don't limit any opportunities that may come our way uh, by not taking care of the things that we know we can control, which is, you know, social distancing in the media room, wearing a mask when we need to wear a mask, you know, following the guidelines that are set forth for, for everybody out there to try to keep themselves safe. Uh, we don't venture very far from that. I think what we do uh, with, you know, 
the younger generation, uh, as I call them, is, is just constantly try to remind them and keep it in the back of their minds that, um, you know, you've worked so hard to provide yourself this opportunity. Uh, the last thing we need to do is compromise that by doing something out of character. Uh, and these guys have done a great job of, of, of kind of focusing and making sure that they're doing what they've needed to do to not only stay on the field, but be successful doing it. Yeah, and can I follow that up with uh, just a question on um, Desmond? And uh, since we're going to speak to him next, you know, what, what have you seen from him? You know, obviously he's the leader on the team, but, you know, uh, going through this week, this is, you know, perhaps the biggest game in program history. What have you seen from, from Desmond Ritter uh, leading the guys in, in preparation? Well, I think the best thing that I've seen from Des is that Des is being Desmond. Uh, you know, he, he's not out of character. It's not out of character for him to lead our football team in every way. Um, whether that's vocally, whether that's through his play, through that's how he studies the game, how he prepares himself. Um, he's a great example to everybody around him uh, of how to get ready for a game like this uh, and the challenge that's ahead for us offensively uh, coming up. So um, I think the best thing about it is, you know, he's in his comfort zone, uh, in his comfort zone in a leadership role. Uh, and he's done, not done anything to kind of venture outside of that. He's just been himself, uh, which is plenty good enough to uh, lead this football team. Thank you, Tino. Our next question is from Michael Casagrande of AL.com. Hey, yeah, hey, Coach. Uh, just a lot has been made about the group of five status with uh, Cincinnati and playing a team like Alabama. You've coached at the, you know, the, the power five level. What, what tells you about this team, your Cincinnati team, that says they're on the same level as in Alabama and the, the Power Five conferences. Well, I mean, I <clears throat> I think it's it's strongly led by the senior class that we have. Uh, we we've got a uh, over 33 seniors that have kind of been through the wars and been through the fire, uh, have had disappointments along the way, have had challenges along the way, have had struggles along the way. Uh, and has done nothing as a group and a football team but overcome those things that people put in front of them, uh, whether that's labeling them a non-Power 5 team, whether that's uh, calling them Cinderella or whatever name that, that the you know, people in the media like to come up with to try to describe this group. Uh, I describe them uh, as a football team, uh, some, a group of, of men that have a common goal, um, that grind and fight, and scratch and claw every day to make that a reality. And um, so, uh, you know, I think this is a group because of the leadership that we have uh, that's capable of matching up and in, in having success in any situation. Do you think that the doubts uh, fuel this team's motivation for this group? I, I mean, I hope they grow, they grow motivation from whatever factor they feel like they need to to gain motivation. I, I, I think first and foremost, above all else, these guys play for each other. Um, they believe in each other. Uh, they've been through, as I said, the wars together and, and the disappointments together. Uh, this is truly a family uh, of football players, not just a football team. Um, and they support and they play for each other. And uh, that's a pretty strong bond to have and, and leads to a lot of success as these guys have enjoyed. Thank you, Michael. Our next question is from John Talty. John? Hey, Mike. Uh, you played Alabama while you were at Notre Dame um, in the national championship. I'm curious. You know, I know their, do their defense has evolved since then, but what might be particularly unique or challenging for you in game planning against a Nick Saban-led defense? I, th I think first and foremost, it's, you know, how athletic they are, um, you know, how, uh, I won't say complicated or overly complicated, but th they give you so many different varieties of looks and, and different change-ups and things that they do. Um, I think that's as much the challenge as anything. And then you combine that with, uh, the quality of, of athlete that they have on the defensive side of the ball, whether that be in the front seven, uh, whether that be with the coverage skills in the back end, um, you know, that, that presents some, some real issues. Um, you know, you have to be uh, at least aware of the fact that uh, you're rarely going to get the same look twice, um, that you have to be, you know, on your toes with communication with your guys up front in particular, and, and your quarterback's got to be able to see uh, the multiplicity of the things that they do defensively and be able to decipher it. 
um, with not a lot of time on his hands in the pocket. So um, there, there's so many unique challenges to playing in Alabama. Um, you know, much like the game we, we were in last year, uh, it's the best of the best playing defense. And uh, they're not only great with what they do scheme-wise and, and confusing with what they do scheme-wise, they got great athletes out there doing it. All right, our next question comes from Mitch Lukitz. Hey, Coach. Um, I'm just wondering, I know you guys are, I'm from the Kilgore News Herald in East Texas. I know you guys have probably seen Alabama by now. Uh, can you tell me, we all know about Will Anderson. Can you tell me, other than Will Anderson, uh, which sounds kind of, kind of funny, but can you tell me, uh, some of the other players on Alabama's defense that stand, just jump out on them? Well, I, I'll answer your question probably a little more generally than you hoped, but I, I, my answer would be pick one. I mean, they, they, I think everybody along their defensive front uh, is, you know, does a great job with, with body position and leverage and, and understands their fit and where they're supposed to be in the scheme. Um, they've got two really solid linebacker, inside linebackers that can not only uh, run, you know, stop the run, but do a great job in coverage. Uh, they've got press corners that are long that can uh, frustrate the crap out of your wide receivers. Uh, two safeties who, even if you try to isolate them, are going to be a problem trying to create uh, matchups against. Um, so I, I, I don't know that there's certain players that I can single out necessarily just to say that you can see across the board uh, the quality of player that they have on the defensive side of the ball and uh, that they're well coached. They're fundamentally strong in everything that they do and, and, and their schemes as solid as anything that we face this year. Thank you, Mitch. Our next question is from Zachary Braziller of the New York Post. Wow, this is good. Don Talty is the sports editor. Um, when you look at Jerome and the year he's had, what what kind of stands out? What why he's made such a big leap, and how motivated do you think he's going to be to, to face his old team? My other question was about Desmond. Well, I think he's he, he's done a nice job of being fully motivated all year. Um, obviously, playing against a lot of people that uh, maybe you came in with or played with at one time uh, adds a little something to it um, for him. But he he's been great all year as far as being on top of his game and doing great things. Um, I think, you know, Jerome is a unique type of individual when it comes to running back. Um, he's, he's a hard yard guy, which means he can get in between the tackles and, and, and do the dirty work that running backs need to do sometimes, whether that's falling forward, gaining an extra yard, gaining an extra two yards, whatever that happens to be. Um, and he also has the ability to kind of break out in space and, and make explosive runs and, and score touchdowns, um, you know, with the ball in his hands uh, and has done a great job of that the entire season. So uh, I think he's a complete back from that standpoint uh, and has certainly added a lot to our offense uh, as the season's gone along. All right, our next question is from Chris Vanini. Hey, Mike, uh, you kind of got asked about it earlier, but um, you guys are uh, – two touchdown underdog, and I'm sure you don't look at that kind of stuff, but is there um, any sense of wanting to prove you guys deserve to be on this stage by your performance? Chris, I hope all is well with you. Um, I don't believe that at all. I mean, I, 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 you know, each kid's going to have kind of his own little motivation thing. I think as a football team, uh, we feel like we've earned our way here. Uh, we feel like and know we belong here. So for there to be any outside extra motivation that's needed to get these guys uh, ready to roll or uh, there's enough of a challenge that's going to be standing across the field from us, that, that deserves our full attention uh, and has our full attention. And, you know, I think the thing that some people forget sometimes about this group of seniors and this, this football team in particular is uh, they did everything that people ask them to do uh, to get to this point. Uh, they've been successful 13 straight times that they've taken the field. And, uh, you know, the opportunity that's in front of us uh, to play next, uh, we're, we're, we're well aware of how difficult it's going to be, how much of a fight and a struggle it's going to be, uh, but one that I think our, our players are going to be prepared for.
And Luke made a comment yesterday that, um, you know, kind of in the, in the middle of the season there when some, some performances maybe didn't go as, as well as you hoped, he, he felt that maybe you guys were putting too much pressure on yourselves. Uh, is that kind of the, the same mindset you kind of got to get past going into this game? I, I definitely think it's a lesson we learned as the season went along. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard to keep um, the players away from social media, obviously. Um, ESPN and the like, I mean, God bless them. We, we, we love it all, uh, the Twitter world and all of it. But uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, people were trying to label us as this or that or tell us what we needed to do. And you're not doing this well enough. You're not doing that well enough. Well, all we really needed to do was be us and continue to win. Uh, I think over the course of the middle of the season in particular, uh, that was a lesson learned um, for this group of seniors and this football team and for the coaching staff in particular um, to make sure we're saying the right things to these guys and, and not full, filling their heads full of things that really don't matter. Um, what really matters at the end of the day and what we've built our program on is the trust, love, and respect that we have for each other when we walk into that locker room. And that hasn't changed no matter whether we won by 13 or 30. Um, so uh, we just tried to kind of focus more on that, Chris, than we did the rest of the noise. All right, we have time for just one more question. Our final question will come from Bobby Nightingale. Hey, Coach. Um, you kind of touched upon it a little bit in your answer, saying, you know, the label of Cinderella and the underdog. Uh, just because recruiting is such a big part of the sport, why do you guys think you've had so much success kind of developing, you know, the Desmond Ritters and some of these younger guys like Alec Pierce and, um, you know, guys that were light, lighter recruited than the guys at Alabama and had success? Yeah, I mean, I think that falls on two levels. I think, it, number one, it's identifying – um, the right individuals that have the potential for growth um, to, to grow their game and, and, and combined with a hunger uh, and a, to gain knowledge and to gain experience and to gain strength and to, to put the work in necessary to become better and better and better at what they do. We, we've been very fortunate to have a, have a good track record of ID in those guys uh, and then being able to talk them into coming and playing at the University of Cincinnati. And, um, I'd, I'd say, secondly, it's, it's the coaching staff. I mean, uh, outside of myself, uh, which I, <laughs> I don't know whether I'd include myself in this or not, but there's some great coaches on this staff, uh, whether that's you know, up and down the line, whether that's on offense or defense. And development is a huge piece of what we feel like our responsibility is to these guys that are in our program, whether they're true freshmen or whether they're seniors or fifth-year seniors. Um, we don't change the model. Uh, we just keep digging and, and, and try to make them better every day and try to find ways from a coaching standpoint uh, that we can help their game grow uh, and put them in a position to have more success. So I think it's a combination of both those things that have, have led to kind of what you're, what you're getting at with your question. Okay, Coach Denbrock, thank you for joining us.